As we look at applications with more than one variable, we're going to take a look at the average value of a function. The question we're going to be answering today is how do we find the average of a continuous function? And we'll start by looking at how we calculate the average. If I wanted to know the average of the numbers maybe 3, 4, and 5, we should know from our other courses we've taken to get an average, we add those numbers together. And then we divide by the number of things there are to get our average of all three. And we can kind of generalize that formula by saying we take the first value, we'll call it y1, plus the second, plus the third, plus the fourth, and we go on all the way to y sub n, which means there are n things. And so we divide by the n things we have. Maybe another way to say that, because y is sometimes a function, we could say f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3, x4, x5, all the way to f of xn, and divide by the number of things that there are. This is nice when the number of things is countable. But when we have a continuous function with values for every decimal or every whole value and everything in between them, we need a way to extend this formula to the continuous situation. And to set this up, we'll consider a graph where we've got some function. And we want to know the average between A and B. Well, what we normally would do is we'd add up each of these lines all the way across, representing all the values. And then we divide by the number of lines that we've drawn. Well, that those green lines all together actually make up an integral. It's the area underneath the curve from a to b of our function f of x dx. Now, if we want to get the average of all that, though, we don't just add them up. We also need to divide by the number of things. Well, we went from b to a. So if we do b minus a, that'll tell us the number of lines that we use to get it. And so we usually summarize that. Instead of saying divide by b minus a, we have 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And that becomes our formula for the average of a continuous function, at least with one variable. So let's start with that. Let's look at finding the average of one variable functions. We've already said that the average formula is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function dx. So let's say a business estimates annual revenue over the next five years by r of t is equal to 120,000 e to the 0 0.08 t, and we're going to find the average revenue for each year. Well, to do that, we're just going to use our average revenue formula. We say we want over the next five years. So we're going to go from 0 to 5 years. 
So we have the 1 over b minus a, 5 minus 0, those are the years, times the integral from a to b, 0 to 5, of the function 120,000 e to the 0.08 t dt. And then we can evaluate this integral to find out how much revenue this company makes on average each year for the five years. The 1 over 5 minus 0 becomes 1 fifth times e to the stuff just becomes e to the stuff divided by the 0.08. And 120,000 divided by 0.08 is 1.5 million, so 1,500,000. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to 5. So we have 1 fifth times 1,500,000 e to the 0 0.08 times 5 minus 1,500,000. And when we plug the 0 in there, we get e to the 0, which is 1. And so we can just plug this into our calculator. And on average, we're going to have $147,547 per year on average. Now, that doesn't mean there's going to be $147,000 each year, because the first year is going to be smaller, the second year will be a little bigger, the third year even bigger, and the fourth and fifth years are going to be above that number. But on average, those five years will make $147,000. $547. Now, I mentioned we wanted to be able to find this average with multiple variables. So we're going to extend this same formula to two variables. And the way we calculate an average with two variables is we don't just divide by the number of things in the x direction. We have to divide by the number of things in the y direction. We end up with 1 over b minus a from one direction over 1 over d minus c in the other direction of the integral from c to d, of the integral from a to b, of f of xy dy dx. And now we could switch this to be dx dy. There's no reason the order has to be dy dx. What is important, though, is that the limits for dy must match how y is changing. And the limits for dx must match how dx is changing. And so if you switch the dy dx, you also have to switch the uh, limits of integration so that we integrate with respect to the correct numbers. So let's do an example. Let's say using x thousand worker hours of labor and y million dollars of capital a manufacturer can produce f of xy equals Let's do 3,500 x to the 0. 0.6, y to the 0. 0.4 units of a product each month. This company wants to know what is the average number of units produced each month
if the number of worker hours ranges from 4,000 to 10,000 each month, and the number of millions of dollars in capital ranges from 50 to 63 each month. Using our formula, I'm going to start from the center, the function which is 350, or 3,500, x to the 0.6, y to the 0.4. Around that, we're going to integrate. And we can do either dx or dy first. I'm going to do dx first. And x is the 1,000 of worker hours. Worker hours are ranging from 4,000 to 10,000. So that goes from 4 to 10. Remember, the units are in thousands, so we need to truncate them to 4,000 to 10,000, 4 to 10. And then around that, we're going to integrate dy. Well, y is the millions of dollars. And the millions of dollars range from 50 to 63 million. But this just tells us the total number of units produced, not the average number of produced. And so if I look at the green going from 4 to 10, we have to divide by or multiply by 1 over 10 minus 4. And looking at the red, we have to have 1 over 63 minus 50. And by putting those fractions out front, we'll end up with an average number of units produced each month. Let's take a look at solving this integral then. Simplifying the outside, we end up with 1 6th times 1 13th. And 1 6th times 1 13th is going to be 1 over 78. Then we have the integral from 50 to 63 of the integral from 4 to 10 of 3,500x to the 0.6, y to the 0.4, dx, dy. And so we're going to focus our attention first on doing this inside integral. As I increase that exponent by 1 on x, because we're doing dx, we end up with x to the 1.6. And then we divide by that new exponent. We'll take the 3,500, and we'll divide by 1.6. And we'll end up with 2187.5. Not enough space. 2187.5. And the y to the 0.4 is still a constant. And we have to integrate that from 4 to 10. And that's what x equals. Now around that, we still have the 50 to 63 dy. We don't want to forget about coming back to that. And we still have the 1 over 78 in front of everything. Now that's left is to plug those numbers in for the x. And when we do, we get 2187.5 times plugging 10 in, 10 to the 1.6, minus plugging 4 in, 4 to the 1.6, times y to the 0.4. And that's still inside the integral from 50 to 63 dy. And that still has the 1 over 78 out front. 
One thing that I will notice, though, is that 2187 and the 10 to the 1.6 minus 4 to the 1.6 are constants. And we know we can pull constants out of the integral. So that's what I'm going to do here. And we're just going to put all this in our calculator at the end. So we have 1 over 78 times 2187.5 times 10 to the 1.6 minus 4 to the 1.6. And then we're left with the integral from 50 to 63 of y to the 0.4 dy. And all that's left to do is just evaluate that last integral. We increase the exponent by 1 to get y to the 1.4. We have to divide by the new exponent of 1.4 as we integrate from 50 to 63. And still in front of all of that is the 1 over 78 times 2187.5 times 10 to the 1.6 minus 4 to the 1.6. And so if we put it all together, we have 1 over 78 times 2187.5 times 10 to the 1.6 minus 4 to the 1.6 times 1 over 1.4. And then we replace y with those numbers. So we have 63 to the 1.4 minus 50 to the 1.4. And it's big and ugly, so let's type it into our calculators. We've got 1 divided by 78 times 2187.5 times 10 to the 1.6 minus 4 to the 1.6, close the parentheses, times 1 divided by 1.4 times 63 to the 1.4 minus 50 to the 1.4. And now that we've got it all in our calculator, we end up with 56028. 560 to 8. The average is 56,028. And that's how we can find our average with two variables. The main thing is making sure we wrap it in the correct integrals in the correct order, and then divide by the difference of the limits. So go ahead and try some of these finding the average problems on your homework assignment. Come to class with questions, and we'll continue to talk about them further. We'll see you then.